if we want to have healthy food or healthy plants, what do we need? Healthy soil, okay? That makes sense? Because the plant is entirely reliant upon the soil and the air quality, okay, to be healthy. And if we, have, if we want to have healthy people, what do we need? We need healthy plants, food, and we need healthy soil. Good on you. So you have got some tools, you've got a pair of boots and a hat, so you're ready to go, but you don't have a garden. In real estate, what do they say? Location, location, location. Exactly the same in gardening. You know, if you were to set up, if you were an engineer and you're planning to set up a new factory, would the location of that factory be important? Right. Okay, and would there be all sorts of considerations you'd need to consider? When, 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 okay, proximity to raw materials, proximity to your market, customers, energy source, all sorts of things, yeah? Well, really, a plant is a factory, isn't it? It's taking raw materials out of the ground and out of the air. It's being powered by the sun and it's producing products for customers. Does that make sense? Shade. Now, if you were choosing a place for your garden, would you, get one in, would you choose a place in full sun or in shade? Trick question, but everyone, I think everyone's saying full sun. Why is that? Because you can shade full sun, but you can't put light into a shady spot. You understand what I mean? Okay, so we're looking for full sun for our garden. But at the same time, the principle of te temperance says that too much sun is not a better thing for plants either. Okay, so we've got to watch out for this. Classic thing is in summer and you're wanting to, even in spring, late spring down here, when you're putting out seedlings and things like that, you might get a hot day and they will scorch the seedlings or they'll wilt and possibly die. The trick is to just shade them for a couple of days till they get their roots out and they're established. When I was growing up as a kid, we had bracken fern growing on our farm and I used to get sent down the paddock to get arms of bracken fern and I'd bring it back and I'd plant the bracken fern around the, the little seedlings to shade them, okay? So you can use shade cloth or anything else you need to do. Just remember, too much sun is not a good thing. How about the no dig garden? Anyone here had experience with the no dig garden? Yep, only a couple, three, four, okay, good, the number's growing. Very, very simple. What's the number one principle of a no dig garden? You don't dig. You don't dig the soil. So the classic thing is grass, okay? Grass. <coughs> Just leave it there, okay? And this isn't the gospel. You won't find anywhere in the Bible or any other sacred writings the formula for no dig gardens, okay? Experiment. Try something out. If it doesn't work perfectly well, do it differently next time. See, some people here, they put a, strong, a, a thick layer of cardboard and paper straight on top of the garden, okay? This particular approach, you put organic matter here in the form of manure and grass clippings, etc., etc., straight on the grass. Why do you think you might want to do that? To decay the grass. Help decay the grass. And what is it that actually causes the grass to decompose? It's the bacteria. It's the fungus. It's, you know our friends in the soil that do that. So by feeding them, okay, it'll decompose the grass and it'll bring life up into our garden bed. Location, okay. we've sorted that one out. We've decided what sort of beds we need. We've built our beds, okay. We've got our support structures all there ready to go. What we really need is compost. I can't emphasise enough how important compost is. But at the same time, I'm pragmatic enough because I'm a gardener to know that sometimes you just don't get around to making compost. You have the best of intentions or you're struggling to get materials or whatever. But a successful gardener, as they're driving along the road, will be looking for sources of material to take home to their compost pile. Nothing. Does anyone here have a green bin that they put out for their... Okay, what I want you to do is never again put green things, plants, scraps, anything in that green bin and give it to your council because you're giving away the most important thing for your garden, okay? What I want you to do is bring that green bin off the road and bring it in permanently into your garden. Put it next to your compost pile and that can be where you put your veggie scraps, storing your veggie scraps while you're waiting to build a whole compost pile, okay? Do you know what I mean? 
or you can use your green uh, rubbish bin and this is what we do we we put comfrey and cow manure and whatever else in it and we produce compost tea do you know what i mean liquid manure and then we use that don't give your council your green waste okay turn it into compost so this is a pretty scruffy looking pile isn't it Okay, this is a lot of big particles. That's all right. It's okay to have big particles. They just take a lot longer to break down than the small ones. You can buy compost. I wish I had one of these beasts. You know, shoveling a couple of cubic metres of compost hurts your back after a while, or forking it over. These guys, yeah, look at that, eh? Boys and their toys. Okay, but most of us, we do it on a smaller scale. This is a pretty looking, pretty looking uh, compost bin. It's not very practical. How are you going to get the soil? How are you going to get it out into that one when you turn it? You know, you've got to put, where's the door? Okay, so this is what I sometimes end up with, just pallets. Buy hard, get hardwood ones. Go to a, a freight yard and they'll have them breaking down and they're no good anymore. Put them on your trailer, take them home, knock them together and you've got a compost. Why do you think there's more than one compartment? That's right, so you start here and it's all big. Okay, and then you can turn it over into that one and then turn it over into that one and turn it back. You know, you can manage it however you like. There's more than one way to skin the compost cat. How much is that going to cost? It's wonderful. Just to finish, be careful with gardening, okay? Be careful because it can really easily turn into an addiction. Form a love affair with your garden and all of your soil bug mates. Another thing I want you to spend time doing in the garden is nothing. Go and sit, watch, observe, think, meditate, pray, whatever, okay? Enjoy, exactly. And lastly, I really encourage you to share your produce, okay? You know, Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And I tell you what, if you want to feel just super about your gardening, share what you've, what you've grown, okay? Share. And if you've got a really grumpy neighbour, someone that every time, you know, your kids have kicked the ball over the fence a thousand times or broken the windows or whatever, okay, the way to that neighbour's heart is to sharing your veggies out of your garden. <laughs> All right, the dressing is a simple dressing and you've possibly all had it before if you've been to these programs because it's quite popular. It's a sunflower seed dressing. I have made this salad with an avocado dressing and that's really yummy too. This time we're going to use one cup of sunflower seeds. Yes, raw. You can toast them. It'll give it a different flavour, um, but I like the flavour. So either way, one cup of water. And then in here I have my seasonings. I've got a sea salt and I have onion powder and garlic powder. And that's simple as that, just put all them in. If they go in. Where's that spoon? Just scrape them in. And lemon juice. And that just gets blended until it's smooth. And you put that on and chill it. Let's make some noise for a moment. You want to put that on for me? Not sure how. Turn that knob. You'll notice, first of all, it goes grey, and then as the lemon juice bleaches it, it'll turn to a white colour. So it's not quite ready because it's still quite grey. We'll just blend it for a bit longer, please. if I could use that to turn compost. <laughs> we'll discuss that later. Okay, so simply pour as much of that on as you would like.